Hello, my name is François Minek. I'm the managing director of BSF 3D Printing Solutions. And today I will talk about the four steps for industrial additive manufacturing. Before I do that, just two words about 4DM. 4DM is the umbrella brand under which BSF proposes all its 3D printing services and products. We are 200 experts who are ambitious to serve you to embrace additive manufacturing. And we are technology agnostic, so we can propose our services and products in powder, plastic filaments, also metal filaments, and photopolymer. But additionally to this, we also propose additive manufacturing services. So before we go in these four steps for additive manufacturing industrialization, let's take a step back and look at the market. The market is all together with machines, raw materials and services, 10 billion euro market approximately. It has been growing 20 to 25% over the last years, and it is forecasted it will continue to grow between 18 and 25% in the following years. However, if you compare it to traditional manufacturing, or if you take the example of plastics as on the right side here, the 3D printing polymer market is a market of only 1.2 billion compared to the global plastic market, which is around 700 billion. So you can see it's very small at the moment. So why is this not growing faster at the moment? And why is it not more a bigger market? For this, we need to look at the hurdles. And these are, according to a study from Ernst Young, the hurdles for additive manufacturing adoption. And you can see two big families of hurdles. One is about cost, so material cost, system cost, production speed. Production speed at the end is also linked to the total cost of ownership, the cost per part. So this cost per part aspect is one very important one on which we are obviously working. And the second one, which is also very important, is the knowledge for design for additive manufacturing and the knowledge of the process themselves. What can they do? Indeed, if you take the approach of taking your injection molded part or parts which are made by other processes or extractive manufacturing, then you don't have the full potential of additive manufacturing and you will not succeed. At 4RDM, we make it our mission, actually, to support our customers to embrace this additive manufacturing revolution and to accelerate this growth by overcoming these hurdles. And how do we do this? How can we support? Is by going through these four steps that we have defined for adoption of additive manufacturing. The first one being basically understanding what additive manufacturing can do and cannot do. Then going into deep dive on your parts and looking how should the part be designed for additive manufacturing, calculating the cost, and then supporting in the printing of the part. So if you look at the first aspect, which is understanding additive manufacturing processes, as you can see on this slide, these are some few examples of the different processes of additive manufacturing. So there are powder technologies, there are filament technologies, and there are what we call VAT technologies based on UV or visible light resins. All of them bring some advantages and disadvantages. All of them have their place in the market. But as you can see, is all of them then will have some constraints of how the part will be built. And it's only by understanding these technologies very well that you can then go in the next step, which is to understand what constraints you have, so the guidelines, what recommendations, and what are the benefits for additive manufacturing. For example, if you're going to define a lattice structure, you need to be sure that this lattice structure is designed so that it's easy to depowder in terms of powder process. If you're going to use a VAT technology with support structure, you need to put the support structure on the best place so it doesn't affect the surface aspect of your part and so on. You also have then some parts which are more recommendation. How do I place my part in the 3D printer for better surface, better mechanical properties, or better strength. And then once you have these guidelines, recommendation, you can enjoy the benefits of 3D printing, which allows a lot of freedom. You can have some hollow structures, you can have some lattices, you can make also some parts with reduced part count. So instead of having several parts which are injected, molded, and then assembled together, you can actually, in one print job, 
print a part which has all the functions integrated, as the example on the top. Or you can have some functional integration, and as an example on the right side, with some cooling channels integrated in the parts directly. So, and once you have this understanding of what the technology can do, what are the constraints, and but what are the benefits, and how should I design for this technology, then you can look at your part. But what's important is not to take the part as it is today and see how could I design it for additive manufacturing, but it's more to look what is this part supposed to do, what do I want to achieve with this part, and then design for this. Uh, this is an example of a certain pipe which we design to go from place A to place B with some constraint in the middle with the lowest pressure loss possible. And then once you have this, you can optimize this part actually for the process. How am I going to place it in the machine, etc., and then get the printed part. So it's very important not to take the part as it is today, but to see what do I want to achieve and design for this. And in this process, you also need to choose the right material. It's actually an iterative process where you need to adapt the design for the material and vice versa. But it's important to know again, what do I want to achieve with this part? If it's going to be in the engine with some temperature performance needed or some chemical resistance needed, then you might want to have a PA6 as in this engine bracket here. If you need some shock absorption, you might need want to design a certain lattice structure and use a TPU like on the right side of the screen. But you might also want to have some environmental aspects where then recycled PET, in this case for the surfboard, is the material of choice. So it's really iteration between the material choice and the design, which will bring then you to the next step, which will be calculating the cost per part. Because after this iteration of design optimization and material choice, maybe you have few options which are available. Maybe you could choose powder process or filament process for doing the same part, adapting the design a bit, and both work for you. So it's important to know what will be the cost then of your part. And on this we can also assist and have very profound simulation tools to do a cost simulation for you take into account the material cost, the hardware, service and maintenance, labor cost, and what's very important in additive manufacturing is the post-processing cost. Because in many cases, you will need to actually either depowder the part, and make an automatization of this depowdering, or have a surface smoothing of the part. Once you have taken all these elements into account, you will then have a cost per part in the different technologies. And there is no rule or there's no technology wins it all. So it means depending on the part, sometimes the powder technology will be the winner, sometimes the filament or sometimes the UV resin or VAT technology will be the winner. There is no winner technology. Each part will have an adapted technology and an adapted material. And that's why we can advise you the best by having all technologies in-house. One good uh, figure to know is on average for a part, 30% of the cost per part will be material, 30% will be the machine, and 30% will be the post-processing. Once you have your design, the material, you have checked the actual cost per part fits with your business case, then you can go to the next step and start printing your part. And for this, we can either advise you on some partners, machine manufacturers with who we work, if you want to internalize the part manufacturing, or we can advise you on some service providers who can then print the part for you, either external service providers or our internal service provider who is uh, Sculteo in this case. And once you have the parts, of course, you also need to check, does it need a post-processing? For example, do you need a better UV protection than what the raw part is offering? Do you need a better surface, smooth surface, coloring? Do you need abrasion resistant, etc.? All this can be attained by different processes, either deep coating or painting or some chemical aging, etc. So we can advise on all these steps. So as a conclusion, how can we support you on your journey to additive manufacturing? First, by supporting you in the design phase 
in the early design phase of your part, then in our technical center for prototyping, doing the prototype with you. And we can do this with all kind of technologies. So we are technology agnostic, and then we can support you in scaling up with our global network of partners. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please write them in the chat.